Right, uh, here today we've got a bit of uh, liquid amber or sweet gum as the Americans know it. Uh, it's about 380 mils in diameter. We're just, uh, oh, I'm just really trying out the balance of the Vicmark VL300 just to see how uh, solid it is with an out of balance lump of timber on it. Um, we'll start it down at its lowest setting. Now that's about 30 RPM there. So we're doing about 200 there and that's probably about where I'd uh, start turning with that. So on that note. So it's uh, pretty much uh, right. Now um, what I need to do is work out whether I can get a where my spheres come but I'll um, leave that to another day. Hopefully this won't open up overnight or anything. I'll, um, the end grains on this are sealed. Uh, so with an end grain sealer which is like a liquid wax basically. So that should, and most of your moisture loss comes out of your end grain, so hopefully that should be alright. But that's uh, pretty well trued up now. Um, now I'll have to leave it at that. It's uh, starting to look like a nice bit of timber. It's always lovely to come down and see what you have. Another tool, uh, that's a pain in, another pain in roughing gouge. So you can see the profile and the type of grind I have on that. I just want to mark how far we can go to, so about there, that's pretty much the limit there, so. Now all we want to do is get the halfway point. So what we might actually call that is a 300mm. So the sphere will be 
around about 300 or a tad smaller. So I'll just uh, transfer that onto the tool rest for the sake of ease. which will be just a simple 150. Doesn't have to be exactly precise, but on a smaller job I'd use calipers normally for this, uh, but calipers don't, uh, won't cut the grade, they're not big enough. Now I'll go back to my uh, super gouge. Now what we want to do is start uh, rounding this, these edges off. We're going to get an arc from that point, obviously down to this point, right where it meets the, uh, the axis. This is, uh, this is a skew chisel like this. I was a bit mortified when I first saw uh, someone doing this, but I uh, realised how, just how effective it was to do this, to, to round off the sphere. It gives you a lot of control. Um, and what I've done, I've ground this with a fairly steep bevel. I'll show you that uh, scraper there, it has quite a big V, I hope that's in focus there. There's quite a, um, quite steep, just to make the, uh, it a little bit more robust, this sort of cutting. Now we're uh, getting uh, 
pretty close there. I, to get this um, perfectly spherical there, what we do, we have a dish shape or top a jar even, something round. Um, here you could even use, providing you were convinced it was perfectly round, uh, you could even use something like that. Um, what you do, you hold it on top there and if you get a gap in around there, you know that you need to take more off the shoulders. Uh, it, it probably shows a little better here. You can see quite a big gap. Uh, now if that was perfectly round from that point to that point, you'd find there'd be no gap there. So that's how you can, you uh, rather than use a template that I see a lot of guys use, uh, which is, you know, you've got to be uh, pretty perfect uh, cutting your template. Well, this takes the guesswork out of it. So given that, we're going to take a little bit more off here. Uh, and that will be the important part to get spherical, somewhere around there. I'll try and go as far as I can, it means I have less work to do when I turn the uh, sphere. It's important at this point too to note, you need to maintain that pencil line. Now what I'll do, uh, I'll have to remember not to move my rest, but I'll transfer it onto the rest so that just on the off chance I take that pencil mark off, I've got it there. Well, there's uh, the finished product. It's uh, just a tad over 12 kilos um, and a little over 300 mil or 12 inches diameter. And there's, uh, there's the lathe that it all happened on, the VL300.